We're talking about the great Jimmy Buffett. Gone way too soon. And we're talking off the air. Nobody expected him to ever leave. No. 76 years old and passed this weekend. He, he, no one knew he was sick or right. very few people. Right. So it was unexpected. And, you know, you just kind of take it There's for a, granted. It's an amazing quote from Paul McCartney coming up, who I'm told by a good source spent um, some time with Jimmy shortly before he passed in person. Mm. That's how good uh, the friends they became. Anyway, Buffett was singing in bars in New Orleans. He loved New Orleans. First album back in 1970 called A Mile High in Denver. It wasn't going well. Jerry Jeff Walker finally gets him to Key West in 1972, and, of course, that becomes his adopted home. 73 and 74, a great title for an album, kind of a peek into the future that you knew this guy was funny and he got it. A white sport coat and a pink crustacean. <laughs> And living and dying in three-quarter time. And A1A, they, critics loved those, actually, but nobody was buying them. And it wasn't until 1977 when he did Changes in Attitude, Changes in Latitudes, which introduced Margarita Ville as a hit, and uh, also brought up a, a Son of a Sailor, and Buffett became radio-friendly at major um, 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 stops all over the country, and really it started to roll from there. Now, you go back, to, I think it was 2011, I was lucky enough to be invited to a private show for CMT, Country Music Television. Mm -hmm. our, our boss, Brian Phillips, has run in CMT for years. And he put together Jimmy Buffett and the Zach Brown Band. I would highly encourage you to uh, watch those Crossroads clips. It was a fantastic show. I don't know, 500 people maybe there. Mm -hmm. But just a, a great, That's great fun. night. So why is a guy with a couple of hits such a big deal? Well, one of the other things is everybody that met him thought they were his friend. And it wasn't a fake thing. He had a great curiosity about life, which I think is why he ran all over the world and did all the things he did and why he never stopped. But when he was with you, if you weren't setting off his BS meter, <laughs> he's happy to talk to you and happy to know you. He told the truth. He was always honest about where he was, who he was, what he did, what he did wrong. He said, I got older, too, and I kind of started to realize I know who I am and I know my limits. And I loved his take on critics in the, in the, back in the day. This is a quote from Buffett. He said, I just don't listen to him anymore. Because as Faulkner said, how many rock stars quote Faulkner? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? As Faulkner said, I don't read reviews because they hurt my feelings. Uh, some critics would say, well, he's just playing the same old S word. Well, that's what people uh, pay to see. I'm an entertainer. And until I can fill up, uh, or until I can't fill up seats, I'm not going to listen to any of that. I listen to my audience. I connect with my audience. I don't play at my audience. I play for my audience. Mm -hmm. And again, the line of people lining up to pay trust. Cheryl Crow just saw him while I was recording with Dolly Parton and Emmylou Harris. He was as he always was, a bright light, wonderful sense of humor, always warm. Going to miss knowing he's on the planet, but I know he's up there sailing that bright blue Caribbean. Bob Dylan loved him. Loved the lesser known stuff. Bob Dylan called Jimmy Buffett a great poet. How about that? Clint Black. Jimmy Buffett is one of my biggest influences. Got to work with him many times. Discover firsthand that he was exactly what we hoped he would be. He was a modern day Mark Twain. Kenny uh, Chesney will make you cry. Kenny Chesney oh, said he owed everything to Buffett. Really? And over the weekend, he got out on the beach near where he lives to do Salem. Um, and, uh, and son of a sailor, um, and, uh, shared a video of him doing it and he's crying when he was talking about it. Brian Wilson from the beach boys said, love and mercy, Jimmy Elton John wrote, uh, Jimmy Buffett has a, and was a unique and treasured entertainer. His fans adored him and he never let him down. He said, it's the saddest news, a lovely man gone way too soon. Bob Seeger, sunshine personified, never met a human being that didn't like him. He's going to be greatly missed. And I talk about the range of people that came out to support him. How about this quote from Pitbull? Pitbull? Huh. He's on stage with Pitbull, had a great time with Pitbull because he could play anything. He could sing anything. Mm -hmm. He said, Jimmy, you live life and didn't let life live you. A true pioneer and a trailblazer. Thank God for Jimmy Buffett. And when life gives you limes, make margaritas. Rest in paradise. Uh, it just, it, it, the list just goes on and on. I love the Cubs. Of course, we mentioned this earlier. Mm -hmm. First concert at Wrigley Field was Jimmy Buffett. Opened the door to all the other stuff. Over the weekend at the Alabama and Auburn football games, this is a boy from Mobile. You know, he grew up part of his life was in Alabama. Mm -hmm. 
and the crowds at Alabama and at Auburn stadiums both stood up and, and were singing uh, Margaritaville. Wow. Top of their lungs. Because, again, everybody knows I the words. I just got the chills when you said that. Great musician, great man, and man could he write. Here's a few Jimmy Buffett lines. Take it all in. It's as big as it seems. Count all your blessings and remember your dreams. Takes no more time to see the good side of life than the bad. Go fast enough to get there, but slow enough to see. We got to roll with the punches, play all our hunches, and make the best of whatever comes your way. Buffett wrote, some people never find it, some only pretend, but I just want to live happily ever after now and then. He said, life's a journey that's not measured in miles or years, but in experiences, and I love this one too. Wrinkles will only go where the smiles have been. Mm -hmm. Now, he was a terrific writer, not just of songs, but of books. I told you, he read everything. Incredibly well read. He wrote five best-selling books. That puts him alongside Ernest Hemingway and John Steinbeck. Mm. Wow. As one of only six authors to top the bestseller list for both fiction and nonfiction. And, of course, the business genius, record label, bars, restaurants, senior housing, cruises, resorts, casinos, clothes, gear, and merch. All that merch. Margaritaville, inarguably the most lucrative song ever because it opened the door to all sure. of this. And that third career as an entrepreneur led to those hotels and restaurants and everything else mentioned. Um, and about a billion dollars in uh, net worth, wow. uh, it's estimated. Now, there's one example, a frozen concoction maker that he came up with a few years ago, which he called his frozen concoction maker. Mm -hmm. Somebody pointed out to him at the time going, Jimmy, everybody's got a blender. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, six months later, he had it in Williams and Sonoma with hundreds of thousands of pre-orders. He didn't work the parties. He didn't campaign for awards, didn't do a lot of interviews, but he always was a very, very big deal. Steve Croft profiled him on 60 Minutes uh, years ago, and if we have time, I'm going to play that clip for you at some point as well. But must remember and recognize his Coral Reefer band because... Uh, Mac McAnally and Mike Utley are two of the guys hurting the most today because, yeah. you know, he was their guy. Yeah. But Doyle Grisham, who was with the band forever, um, you know, it just goes on and on. And I was touched by this. There's a guy named John Vernon. You wouldn't know him. He's got a couple hundred followers on Twitter. He's just a guy, right? Mm -hmm. And he wrote this over the weekend. He said, I worked in the New Orleans Margaritaville in college up until 2006. It was a good job. When Katrina hit, we all had to evacuate. Uh, we didn't think we'd be gone from the city for months. We didn't know. We didn't know we'd lost most of our belongings permanently. We packed light mostly for just a weekend away. A week later, it became clear we didn't know when we were going back. He said, I ended up in Austin, Texas with the clothes on my back and pretty much nothing else. And for the next three months, I called FEMA every day to try and get some relief money so I could replace what I'd lost. But you know who didn't make me wait? Jimmy Buffett. Buffett and Margaritaville cut all the employees in New Orleans $3,000 checks wow. right after the storm. No questions asked. He said that money saved lives. They also let employees know that if any of us could get any other Margaritaville uh, or to any other Margaritaville, there was a job waiting for them. Yeah. So a lot of them got in the cars and they went to Orlando. He said, so I ended up in Orlando. And they set us up with clothes. It was all Margaritaville merch, but it was better than nothing. Right. <laughs> he said we had a job. We had housing. They even comped our meals. We ate at the restaurant. And come October, the New Orleans Margaritaville reopened. Wow. No big what a fan story. For, yeah, no big fan for us. You know who came in first night? Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy Buffett sat down, played for an hour. Wow. Solo acoustic show in the bar to help bring people in. And, of course, all the money went to them. Uh, Jimmy Buffett, this man, right, showed up for us when we needed it. He took care of me and my friends, and I'll always be grateful. Speaking of friends, <coughs> pardon me, but speaking of friends, um, Brian Phillips, a good friend of his, and our boss will be on later. Mm -hmm. But I also want to mention um, my good friend Jay Blunk, who is a boss with the Cubs sure. and uh, with the Blackhawks, very close to Jimmy. Oh. Had great stories all weekend. And uh, my friend Craig Jockaloo was in town visiting this weekend and told a great story about um, going to visit his sister when he was a kid in college, and his sister had just come off a boat where she and her boyfriend had spent some time and met a guy named Jimmy Buffett and fell in love with his music and was with it ever since. Uh, if you're moved by any of this, uh, Jimmy Buffett's foundation, Singing for Change, is a great place to contribute. The family also says, remember Brigham and Women's Hospital, the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, or the MD Anderson Cancer Center. Buffett, a long time ago, started the Save the Manatee Club. He loved manatees. And uh, they've mm -hmm. done a tremendous amount of conservation work as well. 
And on the website for Buffett, just Google up Jimmy Buffett, they sell last mango apparel, and all the money goes you know, uh, yeah. back to charity. But let me just wrap this up with this. Paul McCartney wrote this this weekend. Paul McCartney, you familiar with Mr. McCartney? No, I've never heard Who's of him. Who's that yeah, guy? Fairly familiar guy. Paul McCartney said, it seems that so many wonderful people are leaving this world, and now Jimmy Buffett is one of them. I've known Jimmy for some time and found him to be one of the kindest and most generous people. I remember once on holiday when I'd forgotten to bring my guitar and was itching to play. He said he'd get me one of his, but I said, well, I'm, I'm left-handed. So Jimmy had one of his roadies restring one of his guitars, which he loaned me for the rest of the holiday. He then followed that act of generosity by giving me my own beautiful left-handed guitar that he had made wow. by one of his guitar-making pals. So if you're going, well, Paul McCartney's worth a few billion. Yeah. What do I buy, Paul McCartney? No, yeah. just make him a guitar. Yeah. Hey. It's a beautiful instrument, McCartney said, and every time I play it now, it'll remind me of what a great man Jimmy was. He had the most amazing lust for life and a beautiful sense of humor. When we swapped tales, now again, listen to this. Paul McCartney, when we swapped tales about the past, his were so exotic and lush and involved sailing trips and surfing and so many exciting stories, I couldn't keep up. <laughs> Paul McCartney <laughs> couldn't, couldn't keep, keep up. up. Yeah. <laughs> right up to the last minute, his eyes still twinkled with a humor that said, I love this world and I'm going to make every minute count. So many of us will miss Jimmy and his tremendous personality, his love for everybody and mankind as a whole, last but not least, the songwriting and the vocal ability. He said if someone made an interesting remark, he repeated it in his gorgeous Louisiana drawl and said, well, that's a good idea for a song. Most times it didn't take too long for that song to appear. Yeah. McCartney said, I was happy to have played on one of his latest songs called My Gummy Just Kicked In. <laughs> <laughs> He said we had a real fun session. He played me some of his new songs. One in particular I loved was called Bubbles Up. You may have heard it over the weekend. And I told him that not only was this song great, but his vocal is probably the best I've heard him sing ever. He turned a diving phrase that's used to train people underwater into metaphor for life. When you're confused and don't know where, you just follow the bubbles. They'll take you up to the surface, straighten you out right away. So long, Jim. You're a very special man and a friend, and it was a great privilege to get to know you and love you. Bubbles up, Paul. Pretty great. Yeah. Pretty great. Yeah. Pretty great. Yeah. And Jimmy Buffett said, if there's a heaven for me, I'm sure it has a beach attached. Of course. Corey Rummer uh, is here. Um, I also want to say hi to William, listener 1A, William, mm -hmm. who uh, said thanks for the Alice Cooper tickets. Had a great time, but Jimmy Buffett was one of the greatest. Thank you, yeah. William, as always. Uh, but Corey joins us now. Did you ever get to a, a Buffett show, Corey? Um, no, but my parents did, and I think they warned me off of it for life because they were just kind of mortified about what they saw there. But from what I let me let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something. Not only were your parents not mortified, they were in the middle of it. Yeah, they were living it up. They just wanted. They didn't want you to see them yeah. having that kind of good time. <laughs> I think that's right, Steve. Yeah. All right. So you got a couple of quick questions here for us in the vintage Chicago Tribune Buffett themed. Buffett themed. Okay, just two questions, and you just heard the first one there. Uh, Jimmy Buffett sang the national anthem for a Chicago sports team in 1984. Can you guess what team it was? Wow. Well, I'm pretty sure. I'm we pretty already sure. know. I'm going to go Cubs. Yeah, I'll go Cubs. Not the Chicago Sting? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're right. It's the Cubs. That was the 84 uh, NLCS. Because he loved the Cubs. At Wrigley, remember 84 with the Padres? Won the first two. Going to lock this down? Not so much. Yeah. Uh, but he was he loved Steve Goodman. Steve Goodman uh, and Buffett you know, came from the same thing. That's one of the reasons that some people have said that Buffett it wasn't this gigantic music phenomena because he had the talent to be. But he, he sort of had his own lane that didn't necessarily fit. You know, he had a little folk in him, a little country sure. in him. right. And, uh, and and maybe not out of rock, all of that. All right, give me one more. Okay, last one. Okay, another Chicago sports moment with Jimmy Buffett, 2010, Toyota Park. What hardware did he bring out on stage during that concert? You giving us a choice or we're going to guess? Okay. All right. A, a tin cup chalice. That's from one of his songs. Mm -hmm. uh, B, the Stanley Cup, or C, his lost shaker of salt. Oh, I've gone lost shaker, shaker of salt. It would be that, but nah, <laughs> it was the cup, wasn't it? He brought the cup out. He did with Patrick Kane. You're right. Yeah, and people went bananas. And he didn't know it was coming out. People went crazy. And I'm told, I wasn't there, but I'm told that uh, while he was singing, uh, Patrick Kane was smacking him in the fanny. 
Like Patrick Kane <laughs> wasn't quite sure what to do on stage. So he's kind of dancing around, kept smacking Jimmy that in the fanny. That would be a great question to ask Patrick Kane. Go, hey, did you smack Jimmy By Buffett's way. fanny? <laughs> so That's a good story. That's not made up. I'm told that's true. Did you hear a couple of those quotes, Corey, that we were talking about with, uh, with, uh, with Buffett? I mean, it's amazing. No, no, I missed it. Well, I'm just talking about all these music legends, but then there's business. Warren Buffett is, and it's not a joke, it's Jimmy, Jimmy Buffett's distant cousin. You know, oh, one yeah. of the richest men in the world. And Warren Buffett, just talking about Buffett's business acumen, he said, yeah, Jimmy used to call me for advice occasionally, but after everything he's done, I should have been calling him. <laughs> well, he's, a, he's a marketing genius, yeah. really. If you think about all of you, you listed all the products and goods and services yeah. that he had. And Hunter S. Thompson, again, could you get any farther from Warren Buffett? Yeah. Hunter S. Thompson said, on some nights I still believe that a car with a gas needle on empty can run about 50 more miles if you have the right music very loud on the radio, and that's Jimmy Buffett. Aww. So there you go. I'm, I, and, Corey, I'd be interested to know, and th- this is, goes to the Vintage Chicago Tribune, how many times, I'm sure there was an article written every single time that Jimmy Buffett played Chicago. You know, it's interesting. I went back to 1972. That was the earliest uh, mention I could find of him performing in Chicago. And he used to perform at a place called, I think it was Quiet Night, which I think was not far away from Wrigley Field. Um, And he would just come in kind of hanging out with other people. And I'm curious if that's how he met Steve Goodman, just from hanging around. Because I also read in our Tribune that in 1973, Goodman took Buffett to his first Chicago Cubs game, and that's how he became a fan. So about that? it sounds wow. like he started out very slow. And then, you know, in the 80s, there was Poplar Creek and mm-hmm. Alpine Valley, places like that he would perform. And then he was the first musician to perform at Wrigley Field. I think it was in 2005. Yep, first so concert. He kind of started that whole thing, yeah. that whole concert thing. Um, so, yeah, it was interesting to see and looking through our archives how he started out very small, you know, not very recognizable, and then kind of worked his way up. And he may or may not have taken illegal batting practice on the field as they were setting up for that first show <laughs> with the help of a very important cub. Yeah, he may. may. I can't say it happened. I'm saying it may have happened. <laughs> so, uh, Corey, thank you as always. How do you yeah. get the vintage Chicago Tribune? Okay, go to chicagotribune.com forward slash newsletters. Sign up for Vintage Chicago Tribune, and I'll be in your inbox every Thursday afternoon. Uh, Thank you, friends. Have a great week. I can't wait for this Thursday. Go go have a long talk with your parents. They're just derelicts. (laughs) I will. I will. (laughs) All right. Thank you very much. (laughs) Thanks, Corey. It is uh, 730. Yes, Nick? Well, so along those lines, so she mentioned uh, The Quiet Night, and it was Goodman who saw Buffett perform at The Quiet Night. That's what he Invited him over to the Earl of Old Town. Oh. She, you know, was a and that's big, how they got sure. to be place, and that's how it all started. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, all right, well, and it's love for know. Chicago as well. Yeah, dumb Chicago history. I think I no, saw him at Alpine at Valley. So, I'm I'm trying maybe. to remember. Yeah, yeah, it could well be. Last time I interviewed him, Mac McAnally's in studio playing. It's one of the great musicians in Nashville history by far. Lifetime coral reefer. Buffett walks in. <laughs> Buffett walks in, wasn't supposed to be there, sits down with Mac, goes, yeah, I just, I don't know if this guy will hire me, but I just thought I'd hang out for a while. <laughs> and then started playing and singing with him live on the radio. Nice. Pretty cool. Like that.